From here on out, I'm treating you like you're invisible since you're not helping out. Just like that, my husband declared and started giving me the cold shoulder. My morning greetings got no response. My goodbyes as he left for the day were met with silence. He couldn't even muster a thank you before dinner, just quietly wolfed down his food. He acted as if I was a ghost in our home, and his mom, who we lived with, was just as bad. Despite sharing the same space at home, they acted like I was invisible. My words fell on deaf ears. While my mother-in-law and husband enjoyed chit-chat over dinner, I found myself eating solo, standing in the kitchen. Their laughter ringing out from the living room felt like they were taunting me. I felt so down it brought me to tears. One day, after a year of living like a ghost, my husband broke the silence. Remember what I said a year ago? If you have any issues, feel free to leave. But I guess you, being a homemaker, wouldn't have any options if you did. He laughed, cockily. I've been waiting for this moment, for the whole year. My name is Anna. I'm a 34-year-old stay-at-home wife. I met my husband Jackson about three years back, introduced by a friend. I've been all in on my work ever since I graduated from college. Although there were guys I found appealing, I never got into a serious relationship. I just kept shuttling between work and home for years. I left my job, so I didn't mind the routine, but a friend, feeling sorry for me, introduced me to Jackson, thinking we might hit it off. Once I met Jackson, a hotshot from a top-tier college, working at a high-profile company, I felt our worlds were miles apart, me being just your average office worker. My friend mentioned he was quite the catch and had a string of women after him. But for some reason, he seemed to take a shine to me and asked me out after a few meetups. I was warming up to him too, so I said yes to dating. Before long, marriage talk was in the air, and within a year of dating, both our families had met. Jackson doesn't have a dad. I was told he left after a divorce when he was a kid. That's why he seemed to adore his mom so much, and was pretty insistent on living together after we got married. Honestly, the idea of living with his mom was a little tough to swallow. She didn't seem nasty, but sharing space with someone who was essentially a stranger takes some getting used to. Plus, her place was a bit of a hike from where I worked. My commute was stretched to over two hours. I planned to keep working after getting married, but living together meant I'd have no choice but to quit. Sensing my hesitation, Jackson promised me time and again that he'd do everything to make me happy. I decided to trust him. Finally, I made the call to move in with his mom. After we made it official, I quit my job and moved into his mom's place. She greeted me with a warm smile, and Jackson couldn't thank me enough for agreeing to live together. Maybe we could make it work. I felt incredibly hopeful back then. After quitting my job, I threw myself into housework and mingling with the neighbors. Picking up home cooking tips from my mother-in-law and gossiping about supermarket bargains with the neighbors was a fun change of pace. One day, Jackson came home looking wiped out. It was rare to see the typically cheerful Jackson like this, so I was a bit concerned. Welcome home, honey. You okay? Tough day at work? He responded, Yeah, it was, and let out a heavy sigh. Then looking me in the eye, he said, Anna, I need a favor. I feel lousy and embarrassed even asking, but... He had this serious look on his face. Hey, we're our team. Spill the beans. I'll do whatever I can to help. My response brought a faint smile to his face. Well, I need help with work. I'm heading a new project and drowning in paperwork. I just need you to sort out some stuff I've collected online. Can you handle that? Well, that's a bit anticlimactic. With that intense expression, I was expecting something much more serious. That's it? Of course I'll help. I've been adapting to this lifestyle and was actually contemplating trying something new. So from that day, I started pitching in with random tasks like organizing paperwork whenever I had spare time. It felt great to lend a hand to my dear husband. The idea of easing his load didn't bother me at all, but after two months of living like this, I started feeling worn out. 
Juggling his work and house chores was beginning to weigh me down. Initially, it was just some basic internet research, but gradually I was roped into crafting presentation materials. Now I was handling all the presentation documents. It was just too much. It went beyond what I initially agreed to. There was barely any time left for house chores. That's when I decided to tell Jackson I needed to bow out of helping with his work. Hey Jackson, can I take a break from helping with your work? It's tough managing house chores and prepping presentation materials simultaneously. If it's absolutely necessary, I can stick to light research like before. As we snuggled in bed, ready to call it a night, I turned to Jackson lying beside me. Suddenly, he sat bolt upright. Startled, I sat up too. He looked at me, his face hardening within seconds. Don't spring that on me now. I've been relying on your help to drive this project, but I guess a homemaker like you wouldn't get it. He shot back with a touch of sarcasm. I was stunned. I couldn't believe that the always kind and upbeat Jackson could say such a thing. As I sat speechless, he let out a heavy sigh and continued. All right, from here on out, I'll treat you like you're invisible. If you have any issues, feel free to leave. I gasped at his words. What are you saying? How can you think like that? I managed to snap back, but he ignored me and dove back under the covers. Despite my attempts to rouse him, he'd already drifted off to sleep. After that, Jackson began treating me like I didn't exist, just as he'd promised. He overlooked my morning greetings, my goodbyes when he left for work, and even when I served dinner. He acted like I was a ghost in this house. And his mom was no different. Despite sharing the same place, she behaved as if she was blind to my presence. It was painfully awkward. She wouldn't respond even when I tried to start a conversation. Gradually, Jackson began having meals just with his mom. While the two of them enjoyed dinner together, I ate alone in the kitchen standing up. Their laughter from the living room felt like a cruel joke and it was so sad that I felt like crying. But maybe some of this was on me. If I had been better at juggling house chores and assisting Jackson, this wouldn't have happened. Maybe he's just fuming now and will cool down with time. With those thoughts, I didn't muster up the courage to put my foot down and all I could do was endure. Those hard days rolled on and before I knew it, nearly a year had passed. As was the norm, Jackson and my mother-in-law carried on ignoring me. Ever since he cut off my allowance, I've been scraping by on savings for my single days. It had me questioning why I even got married. As I was hauling in laundry for the three of us, I heaved another sigh. Guess it was time for lunch. With that thought, I went down the stairs from the second floor balcony to the living room on the first floor. That's when I goofed. I missed a step and took a tumble down the stairs. A resounding thud echoed throughout the house. Ouch! I rubbed my sore backside where I'd taken quite a hit. As far as I could tell, no fractures or serious injuries, but I was bracing for a massive bruise on my butt. As I sat there, I heard hurried footsteps from the living room. Anna, what happened? Are you okay? Did you fall down the stairs? Are you hurt? My mother-in-law rushed over, helping me up. Overwhelmed by the fact that I was conversing with her for the first time in almost a year, I blurted out. I haven't heard your voice in such a long time. At this, she froze, her mouth hanging open. Uh-oh. I'd let something odd slip. Quick on my feet, I covered it up with a cheerful tone. Ah, um, I'm not hurt. I'm all good. Sorry to worry you. But it's really nice to talk to you after such a long time. Just kidding. Hoping to lighten the mood, I threw in a playful quip. For some reason, she looked like she was about to burst into tears. Then she asked, I thought you hated me. I was perplexed. Why would I hate you? Why would you think that? Is that why you've been giving me the cold shoulder all this while? As she nodded, she started unveiling a shocking truth. The tale traced back around a year. Roughly, when Jackson began ignoring me, he had somehow convinced his mother, saying, 
Ayana hates you. It's best you don't talk to her. It appeared he didn't take kindly to my not obeying his every word. Maybe he was trying to discipline me or control me by isolating me at home. I never dreamed that Jackson, ever so kind and adored by everyone, could do such a horrific thing. And his mom, also kind-hearted, never imagined her son could lie and wholeheartedly believed that I despised her. I really like you. I like the mom who shared her cooking secrets with me, the mom who welcomed me with open arms. When I said this, she covered her mouth and nodded several times. It seemed like she believed me. I'm sorry, Anna. I should have verified it with you first. When Jackson gets back from work today, let's confront him about this. Cheerfully, my mother-in-law apologized and promised to have a conversation with her son. After that, we spent a lot of time catching up. It was the most enjoyable time I've had in recent memory. Then, Jackson came back from work. He looked taken aback for a moment seeing me and his mom chatting away, but soon shrugged it off and fetched a beer from the fridge as if nothing was amiss. Jackson, sit down. You know what we need to talk about, don't you? She said this calmly. Beer in hand, he wordlessly took a seat at the table. Jackson, stop tormenting Anna. Apologize to her right here, right now. When his mother said this, he snorted. What? I didn't bully her. Got any evidence? Show me the proof. He scoffed, looking incredibly self-assured. Indeed, there was no hard evidence. It's not like I had footage of being sidelined or recordings of him fibbing to his mom. Both his mom and I were at a loss for words when he continued. Anna, do you really despise me that much? Didn't I suggest the same thing a year ago? If there's an issue, leave. But I guess you, being a homemaker, wouldn't have many options if you did. He was right. I wouldn't be able to fend for myself if I left, since I have no income. Even though my parents are still around, my sister and her husband are living with them, so there's no space for me there. But I've had it. I can't be with you any longer. Okay, I'll go. Wait, Anna, wait! I brushed off my mother-in-law's pleas to halt and began packing. I stuffed only the clothes and toiletries I'd need immediately into my overnight bag. Thanks for everything up to now. Do whatever you want. You'll be crawling back soon anyway. Amid his abusive jeers, I left my in-law's house. Fast forward a week, I was lodging at a hotel near the terminal station. I was swamped with various tasks I needed to sort out for my future. Just when things were starting to settle, my phone rang with an alarmingly fierce call from Jackson. I ignored it for a bit, but ultimately picked up around the 10th call. Hey Jackson, how's life? Don't play dumb. It was all you. He yelled so loudly that I feared my eardrums would rupture. It was so loud that I had to distance my smartphone from my ears slightly. What are you on about? The letter. The blasted letter. You wrote that I'm a bully and a shirker and mailed it to the company. What on earth were you thinking? Oh, really? I had no idea, but that sounds tough. I lied. Just as he had said, I had mailed the postcard. After leaving my in-law's house, I had written a letter to Jackson's workplace. Jackson shoves his work onto others. Jackson abuses his wife. Jackson is a liar and I embellished more things in glaring red letters. Don't screw with me. Thanks to you, I'm on suspension. Me, a rising star? What the heck? I'm under house arrest until they can substantiate the claims. I just delegated work to an inept underling. I merely gave a worthless wife a purpose in life. The genial and kind-hearted Jackson was long gone. He was likely shouting with a demonic expression while yanking his hair out. If you claim so, you must have proof, right? Go on, show me the evidence. The evidence that I mailed the letter. I retorted with the exact words he had thrown at me just days ago. His fury peaked and he started shrieking. Unintelligibly. There was no reasoning with him anymore. So I just ended the call saying, Well, I'll hang up then. 
The following day, I swung by my in-law's house to discuss the future with Jackson. We hadn't scheduled anything, but since it was Sunday, he should be home. I let myself in using a spare key. I didn't see my mother-in-law's shoes. She might be out shopping. In place of her shoes at the entrance, there were unfamiliar high heels. As I was pondering if it could be, I heard noises coming from the master bedroom. I had an ominous feeling, so I dumped my bags in the hallway and started filming with my phone as I approached the bedroom. Amid the clattering noise, I could hear the voices of a man and a woman. I braced myself and thrust open the bedroom door. There was Jackson in the nude, and an unknown woman sprawled on the bed. The woman spotted me and let out a startled squeal. Then Jackson also gasped. Whoa, Anna? Oddly enough, I felt incredibly composed, so I decided to just quietly keep the camera rolling. The woman, in a state of panic, quickly gathered the scattered clothes on the bed to cover herself. Jackson, is she the wife? You're joking, right? You said you divorced her six months ago. You said you were going to marry me. So not only was this guy tormenting me, he was cheating too. He must have thought I was the perfect little housemaid. No, it's not like that. It's not what it seems. He was muttering incoherently. And then the woman decided to just get dressed and scram, declaring that they should break up. Silence engulfed the room. When I addressed Jackson, his shoulders twitched. Then he sprang out of bed and started begging for my forgiveness. What a laughable sight. I'll do anything. Just please don't share that video. He seemed truly terrified. He must have been shocked by how well my letter of tragedy worked. So you'll acknowledge your wrongdoings and agree to divorce me? After all, I have evidence now. When I proposed this, he responded with a barely audible, Yes. Sometime later, Jackson and I officially got divorced. Of course, I saw alimony, which he agreed to pay in one go. He was demoted after his superiors discovered he was shirking his work onto his colleagues. Moreover, his reputation at work plummeted due to rumors about him mistreating his wife and our divorce. Jackson, always a stickler for appearances, couldn't bear it and ended up quitting his job. Now he seems to be living a hermit's life in his mother's house. His mom decided to continue living with him to make amends for the hassle he caused his wife, keeping tabs on his lifestyle and attempting to reshape his behavior. I do feel a tad sorry for his mother, who's blameless in this whole fiasco, but I think I'll kindly accept her gesture. As for me, I managed to go back to the company where I used to work. Apparently, there was an unexpected resignation. And by sheer coincidence, it was in the department I used to be a part of. While it feels like I've circled back to the starting point, I've resolved to face life head on without harboring any resentment. That's the vow I've made. Huh? Why aren't you eating, Madison? My sister-in-law Judy would say that when she saw that I had not touched my food at all. I looked down and said, Because I'm just a wife. Huh? What do you mean? Judy asked me for more details and I told her the facts about the situation that's been going on. As a wife and a daughter-in-law, I am not allowed to eat until everyone in this house has finished eating. Hearing this, Judy got up from her seat and stood in front of my mother-in-law, Layla. Mom, just get out of this house. My name is Madison. I am a 30-year-old housewife. I have been married to my husband, Carl, for three years. I am currently busy raising our two-year-old child and working part-time. But my husband and I get along very well and we enjoy watching our cute child grow up together. My husband works hard every day and earns enough for the family. I think my relationship with my husband is good because I can respect him in that way. We are living happily like that, but I have one problem. And that problem is my mother-in-law, Layla. Our house is very close to our parents-in-law's house and it only takes about 10 minutes to get there by walk. Therefore, my mother-in-law calls me over for her own convenient reasons. 
She asks me to do things for her, such as finding the remote control for the TV, washing the dishes because they are piling up, or doing something for her because she doesn't know how to use her smartphone. She treats me like a handyman or her personal housekeeper. I can forgive her for doing this if this happens once in a while. However, Layla calls me almost every day, sometimes twice in one day. To be honest, it's a huge hassle. Besides, Layla is not in need of nursing care, nor is she physically disabled. She is perfectly healthy. That's why I would like her to take care of all these things by herself. However, Layla does not care about such things and calls me over to her house and uses me while bullying me around. By the way, unlike Layla, my father-in-law Nathan is very kind. However, Layla always calls me over when Nathan was not around. And before Nathan would come back home, she would force me out of her house. Since she was so persistent and it was hard to deal with her every time, I discussed my husband about it. My husband immediately warned Layla about it, but... She then vehemently objected, saying, I didn't do anything that mean. And she was furious and protested against what my husband was saying to her. She refused to admit that she had been abusive or bullying me. My husband was troubled by this, and all he could do was to say, Just don't hurt my precious wife. However, Layla continued to call me up and do the same thing over and over. I wanted to discuss about it to my husband again, but he had recently been promoted, and his work has become much busier. He has been working overtime more and more, and he's exhausted every day, so I honestly cannot put this burden on my husband. Therefore, I stayed quiet and endured Layla's treatment towards me. Over time, Layla's bullying gradually became more and more severe. It used to be just a little thing. But nowadays, I was physically exhausted because of her demanding requests. I had to do all the housework at my parents-in-law's house, and even for Layla's friend's birthday celebration, I had to go to the city to buy some meals for the party. I am exhausted every day, and I am always Layla's slave on the days I don't have a part-time job. And seeing this, Layla seemed to enjoy controlling me, always grinning and happily ordering me around and she would often ask me to make her lunch, and when I made one for myself as well, she suddenly became angry. Why are you eating at the same time as me? Excuse me? Don't you know how to respect your elders? I'm the boss of this house. You are just a daughter-in-law and just a wife. You are not allowed to eat without my permission. No way. In the end, I had no choice but to accept her unreasonable instruction. What I made at that time was pasta, but Layla ate it slowly on purpose. And when I finally got to eat, the pasta had stretched so much, and plus, it was cold. I was nothing but a slave, being treated like a slave and not being able to eat my meals without Layla's permission. I didn't need to be treated to the point where I'm suffering if I'm just taking care of Layla. I thought so and made up my mind that I would never go to her house, no matter what she said to me. But then, Nathan became sick and he needed nursing care. I owe Nathan a lot. When I married my husband, Nathan warned Layla when she was being mean to me, and when she spoke ill of me at a family gathering, Nathan corrected her and saved me from being misunderstood by my relatives. After that, when my husband and I visited my in-laws, he spoke to me kindly and treated me really well. That is why I wanted to help Nathan when he was in need. If he needed care, I was willing to take the lead in caring for him. But then, I would have to face Layla again every time I went to my parents-in-law's house. But my gratitude for Nathan is stronger. I told my husband that I would mainly take care of Nathan. My husband was very grateful and contacted Nathan right away. Just then, I received a call from Layla and she ordered me saying, My husband needs care, so you do it. It was really a bad timing and I was so angry. I wanted to do it on my own, but this makes it sound like Layla told me to go and take care of him. I was annoyed, but I replied back saying, I already told Nathan via my husband that I would take care of him. To that, Layla exclaimed, Well, come on, hurry up then, and hung up the phone. Then I started going to my parents-in-law's house every day to take care of Nathan. Nathan thanked me every time, saying, Thank you, I'm really sorry for the hassle. Nathan tells me many interesting stories while I took care of him, 
Even though I come over to my in-laws' place, I feel totally different when I come for Layla and when I come for Nathan. I feel much lighter when I come for Nathan. But here, too, Layla began to bother me. Hey, Madison, hurry up and cook dinner. Layla tries to interrupt me while I was taking care of Nathan. Right now, I have to take care of Nathan first. I decided that I could not let Layla win here, so I put Nathan first above anything else. Layla's face turned red, and she was angry, but I tried not to care. Since you can do it, please, do it yourself. I will never do as what Layla asks me to do. I was determined to stay firm and stick to my guts. However, Layla became angry with me and took a surprising action. One day, I went to Nathan's room to take care of him, but his wheelchair was not there. I wondered where it was. I looked frantically for it, but could not find it. Moreover, Layla was out of town at that time. It was then that I realized that Layla had intentionally hidden it. She did that just to bully me. If I did not put Layla first, she would interfere with my care and I was thoroughly disgusted by her. How selfish could she be? I ended up doing my best, without a wheelchair, to take Nathan to the bathroom, to the bath, and to take care of him. Even though Nathan was getting older and lighter, it was still quite difficult to move while supporting an adult male all on my own. I was very exhausted and tired that day. Just as I was sitting on the sofa to rest a little, Layla came home. Hey, what are you doing? Layla shouted at me as soon as she saw me. This is not your house. I'm home, so you should at least serve me tea and snacks. I got my tired body up and did as I was told, and served her tea and snacks. Layla, where is Nathan's wheelchair? When I asked, Layla grinned and said, Oh, it's in the shed. Why? Nathan needs it every day. But I don't use it and it's in the way. If you want to use the wheelchair, you need my permission. I have the keys to the shed. No way. Layla put on a victorious face and ordered me to obey her. If I don't do this, I won't be able to properly care for Nathan. I had no choice but to be patient and do as Layla said. After that, even though I was taking care of Nathan, when Layla called for me, I had to go to her, which was really tough. If I was even a little bit late, Layla would yell at me in a terrible manner. Layla made me even more nervous and exhausted, both physically and mentally. Then I received a phone call from my sister-in-law, Judy. Hello, Madison. How are you? I heard you've been taking care of my dad lately. Thank you so much. Uh, no problem. Huh? What's wrong? Huh? Oh, it's nothing. I guess I sounded really tired. My voice was not energetic at all, and Judy was worried about me. Madison, I'm going back to my parents' house at the end of this year. Judy said that as she hung up the phone. If Judy would come back home, Layla might be a little quieter. I was a little relieved that I might be able to relax just at the end of the year. Two weeks passed and the end of the year arrived in no time. Layla was excited because Judy was coming home for the first time in a while. Judy works for a major company and is an elite that she worked overseas for a long time. Although she is currently in the US, she often goes on overseas business trips. Because of this, she doesn't often return to her parents' home and this was her first visit home in a long time. Judy, it's been a long time. Layla greeted Judy with a happy look on her face. Come on, come on in. Madison, hurry up and get the tea cakes ready. Layla would say that and immediately order me around. Then Judy said gently to me, Madison, don't worry about me. Your priority is dad. When Judy says so, Layla said, I, I guess it can't be helped then and gave me priority to care for Nathan. Later, it was time to eat, and we all ate the dinner I had prepared. During the meal, Layla continued to say bad things about me. This dinner is so boring, isn't it? Since Judy came home, you should have made it more grandeur. I'm sorry. When I apologized, Judy came to my rescue again. I can't eat many of the things that are sold as pre-made food in supermarkets. I'm glad that today's dishes are all things I want to eat. When Judy said this, Layla frowned and got silent. Nathan seemed happy to see Judy for the first time in a while and said, Let's have a drink today. I brought a beer and put it in front of Nathan. 
Thank you, Madison. It's great of you to always be so quick and caring. Nathan complimented me, and I was happy. Seeing this, Layla didn't like it and said, How annoying. That's how you try to get people to like you. And complained once again. Layla ruined the nice mood by saying that, and I kept getting irritated with her. By the way, my husband had to attend a party at his company and is scheduled to come over to my parents-in-law's house later this evening, so my husband is not here right now. If my husband were here, he and Judy would immediately warn her. However, since my husband is not here, Layla took this opportunity to bully me. That's when Judy seemed to notice something. Huh? Why aren't you eating, Madison? Judy said this when she saw that I had not touched my food at all. I looked down and said, Because I'm just a wife. Huh? What do you mean? Judy asked me for more details and I told her what was going on. As a daughter-in-law and a wife, I'm not allowed to eat until everyone in this house has finished eating. What the heck? Wait a minute, Mom. What's the meaning of this? When Judy asked Leila about it, she said this as if it was a normal thing. Of course! She's just a daughter-in-law and just a wife, so it's only natural, right? A wife eats only after her husband's family has finished eating. Hearing this, Judy got up from her seat and stood in front of Layla. Mom, just get out of this house. What? Layla's eyes widened when she heard Judy say that. What? What's with you all of a sudden? Both Madison and Dad have reached their limit with that attitude of yours, Mom. Saying that, Judy shoved the divorce papers in front of Leela. Huh? What do you mean? Why is there Nathan's sign on it? When Leila was surprised, Nathan opened his mouth. Judy brought this for me, and I signed it just now. Wh why do you want a divorce? That's because you've been skipping out on taking care of me all these years and pushing everything on Madison. Isn't it? You've been talking terrible things about me while I've been sleeping, and I've been recording all of it, you know? What? Apparently, Nathan had a voice recorder tucked under his pillow and recorded the bad things Layla was saying about Nathan. He then contacted Judy and reported it to her and asked her to help him divorce with Layla. So that's why Judy came here today. Madison, I am really sorry for all the trouble I have caused you. I'm going to kick her out of this house for good now. And I'll sell this house and use the money so I can get into a nursing facility. Nathan. When he said this, Layla's face turned pale. N no way! If you divorce me now, what am I supposed to do? I've been a full-time housewife all my life, supporting my family, and you treat me like this? You've been a housewife all your life, but you haven't done any housework at all. I'm not forcing you to cook, but... I know that you were sneaking around and transferring the prepared foods you bought to the plate and making it look like you cooked them yourself. When Nathan cornered Layla like that, Judy also began to say this. As long as there is evidence of you neglecting care and housework like this, Dad can claim alimony from you, Mom. Oh no! I can't pay alimony! Then we'll have to offset it with the division of property. If that's not possible, let's communicate through a lawyer, right away. When Nathan said this with a firm attitude, Layla finally gave up. Then, with a pale face, she signed the divorce papers. After that, their divorce was finalized. Layla was kicked out of the house and is now working part-time and living a poor life in a shabby apartment. Nathan sold their house and went into a nursing care facility. My husband and daughter and I often visit Nathan at the facility. Nathan also has made friends at the facility and seems to be enjoying his time there. When my husband found out that Layla had treated me in such a way, he apologized to me and said that he would file a claim for alimony for the emotional distress she had caused me. My husband's friend's lawyer helped me and I was able to get Layla to pay me alimony. My husband said, I'm sorry I've been so busy that I haven't been able to handle this properly, but I wanted you to discuss to me instead of keeping it to yourself. I reflected on this incident and decided that I would definitely talk to him about any issues that might arise in the future. Still, I am glad that I am free from Layla now. From now on, I will concentrate on my life with my husband and daughter and try to spend happy and joyful days. Thank you for watching until the end. 
If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our channel. See you in our next video. If you can't make ends meet with a take home pay of $2,500, get out! Saying this, my husband forced me to leave. When I woke up the next day, I found a large number of incoming calls from my husband. Hey, where's the key to the safe? That's a type that can only be opened with a pin code. Then, my husband went through hell. My name is Amelia, and I'm a 32-year-old office worker. My husband Lucas and I have been married for almost three years. We were originally classmates in college, and started dating when we met again at a class reunion. At the time, I was heartbroken after being dumped by my longtime boyfriend. I reconnected with Lucas for the first time in a long time and felt comfortable with him, which brought back the nostalgic feeling I had when I was a student. We started going out for drinks after work and started dating. Since we had been friends since school, we didn't have to worry about each other, and I was able to talk about many things and be myself. We continued to date well, and after about a year of dating, we decided to get married. I was almost 30 years old, and I wanted to get married while I was still in my 20s. Lucas was working for a company that paid him a low salary, but he seemed to work hard, and I was working as a company employee myself, so I knew life would be fine. We then officially got married. In the beginning, we had a lot of fun because we were newlyweds, just being together every day made me happy. But as we continued our married life, there was something that bothered me a little. My husband did not do any housework at all. I was the one who cooked, cleaned, and did the laundry. Hey, why don't you do a little bit of the housework too? It's hard for me because I'm the one who has to do all the chores. I complained to my husband, but he would not listen to me at all. I've never done housework before. I see. My husband had lived at home since he was born and had never cooked or washed a day's laundry. I had no idea that he had never done that much housework. Then you can learn little by little. I'll teach you. I suggested to my husband, but he refused. No, I always work late. There is no way I'm going to do the housework after that. My husband suddenly works overtime every day, but I didn't really understand why I was the only one who had to shoulder this additional burden. Besides, I made more money than my husband, who worked a lot of overtime and came home late. So I was not satisfied with the situation where I was the only one who had to do the housework. However, my husband stubbornly refused to do the housework. I'm the head of the family, and I work hard. As a wife, I need you to support the family. If that's the case, I want you to earn more money. But I couldn't say such a thing, and I had no choice but to do the housework by myself. I was dissatisfied with many things, but I still liked my husband, so I did my best at housework and continued to work hard. But then, my husband made an unexpected comment. It was one day at dinner. Amelia, when are you going to stop working? What? What do you mean? When you become a wife, you quit your job and focus on the family, right? Wait a minute. I'm not going to quit my job. Huh? Don't be ridiculous. I've been told at work that it's impossible for a wife not to be a housewife. Don't embarrass me anymore, so quit your job right now. I was surprised to hear my husband suddenly say such a thing. I don't know if it was a co-worker or a boss who said that to him. But ain't the people at his company crazy too? It's normal for both people to work nowadays. And if anything, my salary is higher than my husband's. If I quit my job, we would have a hard time making ends meet. It's not realistic for me to quit my job. How are we going to make a living? Are you going to lower the rent on the house we are living in? 
No, I'm not moving out of here. Why should we have to lower our quality of life than we do now? That being said, your take-home pay is $2,500, so you're going to have to save money to make ends meet. The rent for this room right now is $2,000. That leaves you with only $500 left. It's a job of a stay-at-home wife to make ends meet. I was absolutely mortified when my husband started talking like this. I wondered if he had any concept of utilities, water, electricity bills, and so on. $500 a month is just barely enough for food. There is no way we can make a decent living. I pleaded desperately, but my husband would not listen to me at all. I've never had any problems before I got married, so you just have to make it work. I was taken aback by my husband's unreasonable attitude. My husband had been living at home with his parents, so it would have cost him very little money to begin with. I would not like him to impose his sense of that time on me. However, my husband insisted that I become a full-time housewife, and I had no choice but to comply with his request. With a downcast look on my face, I asked my boss for advice. Amelia, are you sure you want to quit? My husband really wants me to be a full-time housewife. Oh no, are you sure there is nothing you can do about it? He won't listen to me at all, no matter what I say. I see. My boss was very confused. Then, after thinking about it for a while, he made this suggestion. Why don't you treat it as a leave of absence for now, and then try to work from home? What? Work from home? Yes, I'm sure your husband would agree with that. From the outside, you will look like a housewife. I see. I thought it was a very good idea. If I was allowed to work from home, I could concentrate on housework, and on top of that, I would have a solid income so that I could lead a good life. I immediately decided to take a leave of absence under those conditions, and I didn't tell my husband about this and said that I had resigned from my job. When I told him I had quit my job, my husband looked satisfied. Now we can both finally do our part. From now on, don't skimp on any of the housework. My husband laughed. I felt that he really didn't understand my situation, or that he was too naive. Well, as long as I work hard behind the scenes, we'll be okay for now. I was given a month leave of absence for now, and then I was to work from home. After actually living on leave for a month, I realized that this was a really bad idea. My husband's salary was too small to make a decent living. First of all, we had to pay $2,000 in rent, and then another hundred or so for water, electricity, gas, and utilities. At that point, we were left with only about $400. On top of that, the Wi-Fi at the house and the communication fee for the smartphone would also take away about $100, so I would only have about $300 left to spend on food. That is a very low level of food cost for a single person. But this was our budget for food for two people. It would be impossible. However, I wanted my husband to understand how difficult this situation was, so I dared to try living on his salary alone for a month. If he lived like that, he would understand how small his salary was and how impossible it would be for the two of us to live together. My husband was getting more and more green-faced day by day. That was understandable, because I had cut our food expenses to the limit, so the food on the table was very little and frugal. Is it just bread again today? Yes, that's right. Yesterday, it was noodles, and today it's bread. Are you even trying to cook? What are you talking about? We are eating like this because we have to cut back on our food expenses. What? That's impossible. Before we got married, I could eat a lot more nutritious food. That's because you are living at home, right? 
It was your father who was paying for your food, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. I was putting money in the house. I was putting $500 in the house every month, which means I was paying for the food. Even if he had to put $500 in the house, he would not have had to pay anything else, so he would have $2,000 in free money to spend. We only have $300 to spend on food after all other expenses. Why can't he do that kind of a calculation or thinking? I didn't think that my husband was such an uncommunicative and uncommon person. Is he out of his mind working for a bad company that only makes this much money even though he works overtime every day? I even had such suspicions. Can you get a little bit more of a sense of how your money is moving? Or how much you are making and what you are spending it on. I showed him the bills for utilities, gas, and rent. If I went this far, he would understand how difficult it is to live on my husband's salary alone. But my husband would not even look at them. Cut the crop! I've had a normal, trouble free life. It's your fault that my meals are frugal and that we can't make ends meet. Now that you're a housewife, you should do better. My husband yelled at me and went back to his room. With a sigh, I put the dishes he had finished eating in the sink and washed them, leaving them on the dining table. I didn't think he was like this before we got married. I guess you can't really understand a person's nature until you live with them. I immediately started working from home. I decided to live on my savings until my next payday. Even so, I decided to live on my husband's take home pay of $2,500 plus a little extra so that we could save as much as possible. Basically, my husband's salary will cover our living expenses and I will use my savings to pay for the food expenses. Therefore, the food we usually put on the table become more nutritious and the number of dishes increase. My husband seems satisfied with the improved diet. See? You can do it if you try. Why didn't you take it seriously from the beginning? It's obvious you've been slacking off. I was extremely angry at being told such a thing, but I persevered. I had to hold out until I got my next paycheck. I spent the rest of my busy days juggling housework during the day and my work from home job. Finally, a month passed and my salary and my husband's salary came in. I kept my bank documents at my parents' house because I was afraid of what my husband might do to me after I found out he was insane. As long as I had my debit card, I could withdraw money and I could check the balance in my account with my phone. So I seldom needed my bank document and I did one more thing just in case. I bought a small safe to keep my husband's salary in. It's a very inexpensive safe, but it's a convenient safe that can be locked by entering a 10 digit PIN code. After my husband's paycheck came in, I decided to keep the money in this safe and transfer the rent and other expenses when it was time to pay. Otherwise, my husband would suddenly spend the money. To my surprise, my bad premonition came true. It happened one day. Hey, I ordered something, and it will be delivered tomorrow, so you need to pay for it. What? What's getting delivered? A set of golf clubs. What? What do you mean? My boss and I were talking about playing golf, so I ordered a set online. Wait a minute. How much did it cost? $2,000 for the whole thing. We can't afford that. Why not? You're not doing a very good job of keeping track of the money, are you? Your salary is $2,500 a month. After paying $2,000 for rent, you have only $500 left. With that $500 left over, we still need to pay for various other bills. And yet, $2,000 out of pocket is a negative amount. This is simple math. Why don't you understand? My husband's face turned red, and he got angry when I got emotional and said so. Shut up! Don't make fun of me! 
If you can make ends meet on the take-home pay of $2,500, then get out! Hey, what are you doing? My husband brought my stuff from my room and threw it in the doorway. You don't need to be in this house. Get the hell out of my house! Saying that, my husband forced me out of the house. I can't believe it. I didn't realize he had no common sense at all. All right, I will get out. With that, I took the bare minimum of my belongings and left the house. I called my parents and explained the situation. I'm sorry, you've had such a hard time. You can stay as long as you like. My parents were so kind to me that I almost cried. I stayed at my parents' house and had a relaxing time for the first time in a long time. When I woke up the next day, I received many calls from my husband. Hey, where's the key to the safe? The safe? Don't play dumb. It's that safe in your room. You opened my closet? We are a married couple. Do you have something to be ashamed of in there? No, I don't. I'm upset that you opened my closet without permission. I don't care about your personal life. Just tell me where the key to the safe is. I just received a set of golf clubs, and I have to pay for them. That safe is a type that only opens with a pin code. What? There's a keypad on the side of the safe. You have to enter the number on it to open it. Then tell me the number quickly. At this point, I had a nasty thought. No, I won't. What? Hey, you've got to be kidding me. It's none of my business if you are in trouble. Hey, that's enough. You know what happens when you do this. That's my line. I'm at my limit. I'm divorcing you. What are you talking about? Divorce is a given. Are you serious? Of course I am. I'm sick of you. Oh, really? I'm sick of your cluelessness too. You're going to be in trouble from now on because you're a housewife and don't make any money. I won't forgive you if you come crying to me. I'm not going to do that. Well, I'm hanging up now. I said so and forcibly hung up the phone. My husband then went through hell. I hired a lawyer through my father's referral, and the divorce was processed through the lawyer. My husband was very upset because he didn't think I was serious about divorce. He was reluctant to divorce until the very end. But when the lawyer told him that we would have to go to court, he suddenly freaked out and signed the papers. Then my husband took off on his own. The golf club bill and the rent bill came at once. And my husband called me in tears. Please, either give me the money or give me the pin number to the safe. Since the divorce was final and the money in the safe was my husband's salary, I gave him the pin. But of course, he couldn't pay for both. So my ex husband paid the rent and canceled the golf clubs. This made him hated by his bosses and he lost his chance to get ahead in his career. In addition, my ex-husband had no savings, and the credit card bills came in one fell swoop. He had originally saved money because he had stayed at home all the time when he was single, and he had not been concerned about it at all during his previous marriages because his credit card was deducted from his savings when he used it. But when he tried to buy golf gloves, he thought it was strange because he couldn't use his credit card. He later realized that the reason was that there was no more money in his account. He had been using his credit card as usual without knowing that, and he had received a credit card bill for a considerable amount of money. My ex-husband immediately tried to ask his parents for help, but he had explained to them about our marriage and told them that we were getting a divorce. My in-laws apologized for their stupid son and said that from now on, they themselves would no longer spoil him. So they are ignoring my ex-husband without dealing with him when he asks for help. My ex-husband called me crying and asking me to help him as his ex-wife because no one would help him. I told him that I was a stranger now and that he should stop calling me 
and I hung up and blocked his number. Then I heard a rumor that my ex-husband had quit his job, moved to a place with much cheaper rent, and was living a frugal life while working part time. And I heard that he regrets his lack of common sense until now. I will never get back with him, but I think it's great that he's reflecting on his past. I hope that from now on, he will have a strong sense of finances and live a life that fits his budget. Meanwhile, I'm living peacefully with my parents while working from home. I told my boss that I would go back to work because of the divorce, but he said I could choose whichever I wanted, so I chose to work from home. I chose to work from home because I found it easier to concentrate on my work and achieve results. And recently, I have started a second job, which has allowed me to increase my savings quickly. I will continue to work hard and save money to increase my assets and make my life easier in the future. For now, I intend to save enough assets to semi-retire within five years.